In this video, we're going over how to use the Samsung Galaxy A20 for beginners. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. If you want to stay up to date on all the mobile technology coming out and learn cool tips, tricks, and hidden features, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and tap the bell to turn on post notifications so you can be alerted every time we post new videos. Today we're going to walk you through using the A20 and this is for a beginner, first time smartphone user or someone who is maybe new to Android. We're just going to take it very slow and make sure you understand how to navigate this phone and how to do all the basic things. So on the right side of the phone you will have a volume up and a volume down button and right below those two buttons you have a power button. Now this is a power and it's a standby button. It serves as a dual purpose. When you hit it once, the phone will go to sleep and just by tapping it again, it'll uh, wake up the phone. So the phone is not off just because the screen is dark. Um, you will have to actually, if you wanted to turn the phone off completely, you'd have to hold down the power button and then from there you can tap power or restart. So that's how you would actually turn the phone off. But you really shouldn't have to turn the phone off at all. The phone is meant to stay on and just go into a sleep mode again when you're not using it like that. All right. On the back of the phone, you will find you have your dual camera, your flash, and you have your fingerprint scanner. Once we set this up, you'll be able to just take your finger and place it over this and it will automatically unlock the phone so you can begin using it. So you don't always have to put in a passcode or a pattern every time. So those are the buttons. Now, uh, those are the exterior buttons. Now we're gonna go over the, um, the touch button. So you'll find three buttons on the bottom of the phone. This is your home button right in the center. This is your recent apps button and this is your back button. Now we'll start with the home button here. Um, no matter what you tap, let's say we were to go to Google Chrome and you wanted to go back to the main screen, you just tap the home button right here and it'll take you home. That's simply what it does. No matter what screen you're on, it'll always take you back home. Now you can actually hold the button down and it does something different. It'll launch what is called um, OK Google and this is your Google Assistant. So you can actually use this to to ask the phone to do different things for you. I can Google something. I can say, set a timer for 10 minutes. So like just as an example, I can hold down, set a timer for 10 minutes. Sure, 10 it, minutes. And it will automatically set a time, set a timer for you. You can ask it, you know, who are the Lakers playing tonight? Or who sings this song? You can ask it anything and it'll search the web for you. So it's a very good resource to use. Again, that's when you hold down on the button, but just tapping the button once will just take you back home. So that's what that does. Next we have the back button. So with the back button, it always takes you back one step. So let me give you an example of this. If I were to go to the settings menu and we find the settings, by swiping down from the top here in the upper right corner there's a little wheel right next to the magnifying glass so i'm in the settings menu right now and let's say i were to tap on advanced features think of that as by tapping on that it's going to take me forward one step now maybe you say i want to get out of this menu and i want to go back to the last page i was on that's when you would use the back button it'll take you back one step now we're on the main screen of the settings. And if I wanted to get out of the app completely, I could hit that home button right here, or I could also hit the back button as well. So it always just takes you back one step. If you tap something you didn't mean to tap, it's an easy way to go back one screen. Now, the next thing you need to know is when you open one of these, these are called apps, short for application. When you open an application, and then you go home, that app does not uh, stop working. It works in the background of the phone. The app will only stop when you stop the app. Just to give you an example, so this button here is your recent apps button. So when I tap on this, it'll show me any app that is still running. Now we were just in the settings and we went home, but that app is still going. And that's why when I hit recent apps, it's still there. If I actually want this app to close, I have to hit that recent apps and I can swipe up. And now that I've swiped up, the app is completely closed. 
What I can also do is hit close all and it'll just close everything that's running in the background all together. This is the fastest way to close out anything that you're doing. So don't over, over uh, obsess about it. The main things you need to know are that this button always shows you the apps that are running in the event that you're doing what I like to do and you're running multiple things. So maybe you're on the internet looking up something on Google and at the same time, someone could also be sending you a text message and you're going back and forth. So by just hitting the recent apps, I can jump between these two things. I can go to Chrome, then I can hit recent apps and I can go to messages. So it's just an easy way to jump between the different apps and things that you're working on. So that's all that is. Now that's navigating, that's basic navigation. Now the next thing you need to know is where are all the apps on the phone? If you'll notice here by swiping left and right, this will take you to different pages on the home screen. So that's one page with a few apps. Swipe over, these are a few more apps, but there's more apps on the phone, where are they? Well, to get to the rest of the apps on the phone, you have to swipe up on the home screen. And this takes you to what is called your app drawer. This is where you'll find all of the apps that are on the phone. Anything you download, and you do all your downloading through the Play Store, any app you were to download, app, game, book, whatever, or apps and games are all gonna be loaded in this section. So like this will fill up, and then you'll swipe over, and then you'll have another page full of different apps. So this is where you find all of the apps or programs that are on your phone, okay? At the very top here, you have another useful resource called Finder Search. So maybe you just downloaded something and you can't find it. You can always go up here, tap on Finder Search, and then you can type in the name of whatever the app is to try to find it. So maybe like Gmail, for example, you could type in Gmail, and it'll take you right to the Gmail app right there. So again, what that does is it'll search the entire phone because sometimes you'll have an app that's in a folder like this. So you don't see the Gmail app anywhere here and you don't see it here. And that's because it's in this Google folder right here. But I was able to find it because I did a finder search right here. So that's where you find all the different applications on the phone. Next, we're gonna go over the notification panel. So by Swiping down from the top of the screen, again, take your finger, and basically at the top of the screen, just swipe down, and then, so there, well, there's two things that happen in this section. So one, there are your notifications. These are messages from the different apps you have on the phone. So for example, if you have Gmail on the phone, it'll show you if you have any new emails in Gmail, you'll find it in this section. Right here it says Gmail and it says I have two new Gmails. I can uh, use two fingers and pull down and I can read more of that message or I can simply tap on one of these emails right now and I can go read that message right now. So that's what you use the notification panel for is simply being able to see the different messages and alerts that are coming through based on what apps or games you have on the phone. That's the first thing you do in this session. The second thing you'll do in here, you can pull down further and you have these things that are called switches. These are different switches that control different things on your phone. So for example, if you wanted to connect to Wi-Fi, you would make sure this symbol is blue. If that symbol is not blue, it means that your Wi-Fi is turned off. So to turn your Wi-Fi on, you'd have to tap it once to turn Wi-Fi on. And then if you actually want to connect to a network, maybe you're at a Starbucks and you want to use their Wi-Fi, you would hold down on this button and it would take you to the Wi-Fi setting in the phone. And you would look for the network you want to connect to, maybe blessed to tap on that. And then you would have to type in the password of that network to connect to it. That's how you would connect to Wi-Fi. Now, if we swipe down, we have a few other really good options up here. We have uh, airplane mode for when you travel. We have our mute and vibrate setting. So uh, this is the sound. So this is if you want all the sound on. 
I can tap it once to put the phone on vibrate and tap it again to put it on a complete mute so the phone won't make any noise. And then I can tap it again to turn the sound back on. So that's how you would put the phone on vibrate or uh, turn the sound off. Next we have Bluetooth. If you want to connect to a Bluetooth speaker or Bluetooth headphones, you, same thing like Wi-Fi, you wanna make sure that it's lit up blue. If it's not, tap it. And if you wanna connect to a new device, hold down on that as well. And it will take you to the Bluetooth section of the phone. And then you'll look for um, the device you wanna to connect to, tap on it, and it should automatically connect. Okay. Next, we have our mobile hotspot. In case you wanna use your phone as a mobile hotspot, you can tap on this, and you can create internet from your phone that you can then connect to from the tablet. We have a flashlight. By tapping this, you can use your phone as a flashlight. Come in the house and forget to turn the lights on. Very convenient. We also have a power saving mode. So if you, your battery is low and you need to make sure your phone is gonna work for the next few hours, you can tap on the power save mode option and this will stretch your battery a lot longer. Now there's another page of switches. You just swipe to the left and you have a do not disturb, NFC, night mode, navigation bar. A lot of these aren't as important, so I'm not gonna go through each one. I'm gonna swipe back. The other important one I think you should be using is the blue light filter. Now this is for when you're using your phone at nighttime or, or in very low light environments. This will actually help your eyes. It kind of puts a blue tint over the phone so that your eyes don't get fatigued from looking at your phone so much. So definitely recommend you use that feature. So those are the notification switches. These are your notifications. And the last thing I just kind of want to go into in a little detail is how you download apps and games on the phone. So you will need to go to the Play Store, which is right here, and tap on that icon. Now, um, if you haven't set the phone up yet, if you tap on that icon, it might take you to a different screen that will ask you to put in a Gmail account. You will need a Gmail or a Google account um, in order to be able to download apps and games on the phone. If you don't have one, go to gmail.com. In the right corner of that website, there should be a blue button that says get Gmail. You'll click on that and you can then look for another button that says create account. And you can create your own Gmail account that you would then use to sign into the phone. And once you have that, you'll be able to go through the app store and download games and different apps for the phone. So I'm in the game section right now, but basically if there's something you wanna download, let's say you wanna watch Netflix, you would tap in the box at the top of the screen here and where it says search for apps and games and we could type in Netflix. And Netflix came up first, tap on that. And then you tap install. That's how you download an app, very easy. Now, every now and then you'll see an app that's not free. Just to give you an example, if I tap on Disney Plus, this button will just say install. But if this wasn't a free app, instead of install, this would have a price. It would say 99 cents or $2 or $5. If you ever see a price in this bar, it means you do have to pay for it. So just be aware of that. And when you tap on that, it will ask you to add a credit card to your account to pull the payment from. So just FYI. So we just downloaded Netflix. Now, how do we find Netflix? Where is it on the phone? We're gonna swipe up, swipe to the left, and there is our Netflix app right in our app drawer. It just goes right to the next one. So there's Netflix. Okay, so those were the main basics. Now I'm gonna give a disclaimer. I'm gonna go into even more detail in the next half of this video. Um, if you feel like you've got what you need, you can stop watching from here. I'm gonna take it to another level of simplicity and go over how to make a phone call, how to send a text message, how to take pictures. So if you feel you need more, uh, keep watching. But if you feel like you, you've got enough and you understand how to use the phone, feel free to click off and move on to the next thing, all right? So let's go ahead and keep going. Now to make a phone call, you will need to go to the green call button at the bottom. This is your phone app. And 
you have four different options at the bottom here. The, the important options are gonna be keypad, because keypad is where you're gonna see your numbers and be able to type in a phone number. You'll have recent. This will show you anyone who has called you or you have called. And generally, if you only call the same people over and over again, you can just go to recent and find the person in the list, tap on their phone number and call them that way. So that's an easy way to make calls if you just talk to the same people. You also have contacts. Now in the contact section, you are able to uh, go through anyone you have saved as a contact on the phone and find their name and call them. And if you want to save a phone number as a contact, you would need to go to the plus at the top of the screen here. Hit the plus. Now, as a disclaimer, uh, I wouldn't recommend you save contacts to the phone or to your SIM card. Always save your contacts to your Google account because if you stop using this phone and you decide to switch to a new phone, all you have to do is sign into the Google account on the new phone and it'll automatically bring all the phone numbers over to the new phone. Um, when you save them to the phone, uh, it's easy for numbers to get lost. Just a small disclaimer. So I'm gonna tap on Google and tap in set as default. And here I'll type in the first name, John. And I can add any work information, a phone number, email. I can tap on the camera here and I can add a picture. When John calls, I want this to come up. And then I can hit save. And that easy, I can save someone as a contact in the phone. Okay, so we're gonna use that back button to go back. And now we're out of the call app. Once again, keypad to make calls. This is recent calls and contacts are where you'll find any numbers that are saved in your phone. Next, to send a text message, you will go to this app. This is your messaging app. Now, to send a new message, you're gonna tap on this little blue icon here. And then you'll type in the phone number of the person you wanna text. So, 555-4342. I'm gonna then come down here where it says enter message, tap there, and I'm gonna say hi. Hi. And then you're gonna hit this little green circle to send the message. And that's it, really easy. That's how you send a text message. Now, this little plus here will allow you to send someone a picture you've taken. So if you've taken a picture on the phone, I can look through this list here and see if that picture is here, or I can go to from gallery and that's where you'll find the rest of the pictures you've taken on the phone. But let's say I just wanna send someone this first picture right here. I'm gonna tap on it hit done, and then use this little green circle and tap that, and then it's gonna automatically send that picture to the person. So that's how you would send or text someone a picture. Use our back button to go back one step, and then we can use our home button to go back home. The last thing I wanna show you is how to use the camera and it's this icon right here, the little red background with the little white camera. Tap on that. This is your camera. It will automatically be pointed um, away from you. Now, to have it point to you, take a selfie, you would need to tap on this icon. This will rotate the camera and turn it the other way. I'm not gonna point it at me because you don't wanna see me, but uh, if you wanted to take a selfie, that's how you would do it. You hit the white button, that will take a picture, and then I can hit this button again to turn the camera back around. Now, if you wanna see the picture you just took, you tap on the little circle right next to the shutter. This is the shutter button. This is the gallery, so tap here, and I can see the picture that I just took. Really easy. If I wanna go back to the camera, I can use the back button. If I wanna send this picture to someone, I can simply tap on this button. This is your share button. If I hit share, I can text this to someone or send it as an email. Let's say I wanna send it as a, a message. I can tap 
on message, and I hit the wrong button, so let's try again. Message. And then I can type in the name of the person I wanna send it to, and then it'll open up a text message for me. So, or I can say, I don't like this picture, I wanna delete it. You can just hit that delete button or the trash can and turn into trash. Okay, and hit our home button to go back home. So these have been the basics on how to use the Samsung Galaxy A20. Hope you guys did find this video helpful. Make sure you like, favorite, and share if it was helpful. Hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Take care and have a good one.